Welcome Maria and Brett. We're here in this beautiful place on this gorgeous day to witness your wedding. To honour your commitment to each other and to add our best wishes and blessings to the words that will unite you. They are rightly proud of their relationship and they want more than anything, finally, third time lucky, to be able to celebrate this commitment with you. Collectively, you are the most important people in their lives. Your presence is the reason for this ceremony. Maria and Brett, your journey doesn't start today. To find that moment, we have to go right back to March 2013, when Brett, you suggested that you were spending so much time together, you might just as well change your Facebook status. So today is just a next step in the journey. Today you're making a forever commitment, committing yourselves, your lives, your love to each other. So, no longer simply partners and best friends, we now recognize your union as husband and wife. Brett, you may now kiss your bride. Family and friends, Please put your hands together, raise the roof and join me to welcome for the very first time Mr and Mrs Gardner. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and thank you all for coming. Um, I'm sure you all know the format by now so uh, please get comfortable and fill your glasses because it's uh, some stories about Brett coming up. Now I've known Brett since we started school in Newant in 2001 and in that time we've had a couple of close calls. In fact I've actually nearly killed him twice. So I'm both confused and honoured to be standing here today in this capacity. The first thing I'd like to talk about is young Brett's temper. <laughs> in his early years, it didn't take much to provoke him. And once he snapped, his first reaction was always to throw stones at us. <laughs> Not in a light-hearted, this is a warning to stop kind of way, but more in a, if one of these hits you and kills you, it's your own fault kind of way. <laughs> the next thing I'd like to talk about is the clear and concise career path Brett has taken to becoming a plumber. He started out, as most plumbers do, riding horses for Wales. And after a stint in a livery yard in France, he realised he wasn't actually learning very much about plumbing. So he came back home and enrolled on a course to study sport at Hartbury College. Committed to the cause of as, as ever, he took out a student loan, spent it all on a gym membership and a pallet load of the performance enhancing nutrition and knuckled down <laughs> to the job in hand. After a few months, this must not have been working, as he contacted me and asked me if I wanted to join him at some evening classes learning how to be a stuntman, as this would definitely help further his ambitions as a plumber. From there, he got involved in some film work and spent some time working as an extra on various films, including Lord of the Rings, when they became short of hobbits. Again though, after a while it became clear that this was not helping him to pursue his end goal, so he packed that in and got a job at Nando's. 
It's amazing really with such a convoluted start that he's ended up where he is today as his own boss and a successful plumber. That said, I've never let him touch my house. <laughs> now I could go on with stories about Brett all night. I've known him for such a long time there's probably a dozen more that are worth recounting. Ones like the time when he used his mates as ladders to climb out of a sinking boat to save himself. <laughs> but as is tradition, it's time to end on a more serious note. I'd like to conclude by offering my very best wishes and good health to you both, now and in the years to come, from me and from everybody else here. You really are great people, and you really are a great couple. And I'd be grateful if you all be upstanding and join me in a toast to the bride and groom. Bride and groom. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, firstly, on behalf of me and my wife, I would like to welcome you all here today and thank you for celebrating our day with us. Um, it is with great sadness that there are some very special people who cannot be with us today. So for all those who aren't here to celebrate with us, for whatever reason, I'd like to propose a toast to absent family and friends. <clears throat> I wouldn't be stood here today married to the woman of my dreams without some very special people in my life. Mum and Dad, I probably wasn't the easiest child growing up several broken windows, doors and plenty of broken controllers. Still, you've always been so supportive of me and I couldn't have wished for more hardworking, caring and committed parents. Amy. <laughs> mum and Dad probably made me the favourite because I wasn't half as bad as you. You know, you did make Mum a grandmother at 40. <laughs> but you and Derry have been so amazing and supportive of, of us since day one, so thank you for always being there. Karen. <laughs> I would like to thank you for the warm welcome you have shown, shown me since the very beginning. As soon as I met you and the rest of the family, I could instantly see why Maria is the very special person that I've been lucky enough to marry. And I'll do everything in my power to love and protect her. But if you could just stop buying cheap plumbing materials and expect me to work miracles with them, then everything would be perfect. Now, when it comes to choosing a best man, I was ideally looking for, some, for an intelligent, creative and funny guy who could best tell the story of the man I've become. When I suddenly realised I didn't know anyone like that, I simply asked my friend Dan. <laughs> Seriously though, Dan, you've been a great mate to me over the years and it's a friendship that, I've, that I can trust, value and I've many times relied upon. And I couldn't think of anyone else that I'd rather have standing beside me today. Now, to my beautiful wife. Maria, you look incredible. I know I have to say that, but honestly, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. But the truth is, we wouldn't be here if you hadn't replied to that god-awful DM I sent you on Facebook. <laughs> there aren't many girls that would be happy with a first date that involved go-karting. And in the end, neither did Maria, who didn't like the competitiveness of me and the other drivers bumping her. She pulled over and started to cry. <laughs> but at the end, as I sat there consoling her, I knew I'd met someone very special. That was later confirmed when she agreed to see me again. From that moment, our relationship gradually developed and we made a firm and genuine commitment to each other. Right from the beginning, I knew Maria was, was special and it was different, and I was right. I'd never met anyone who had su such an issue with my floor drove and the noise I make when I breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I know she will never love me as much as she loves our dog Arnie. In my defence, I never use the garden as a bathroom and I rarely let myself clean in public. <laughs> So I think in the long run, I should have a slight edge. Maybe not. <laughs> Four years ago, I proposed in Italy because I realised Maria was the one I wanted to share the rest of my life with, and she simply makes my life complete. I'm a happier and far better person if I have her in it. That day, Maria, when you said yes, was the happiest day of my life. I'm just so happy to be stood here today as your husband. I'm just so excited about the adventure of married life that we're about to begin together. So I'd like to propose a toast to Maria. Yeah. 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 Yeah.